Hey guys, this is Matt Core from controlpaint.com and today's video is going to go out to you total amateurs. This is an issue that I think every new digital artist sits down at Photoshop and at some point and makes this mistake. They've drawn a nice line drawing and now they want to make it a color. They want to fill it in. Well, what's the obvious tool for that? The paint bucket. Okay, so they've picked a color. It's going to have a nice red color for my apple and I'll fill it in. Yeah, but you can see the edges are very gross. They're not what I'm looking for at all. This is probably a familiar sight for some of you veterans. And there's a lot of different ways to get around this issue, but the most important and fundamental one is that you're usually not going to have color and line art on the same layer. You're just going to keep them separated. And really, Photoshop is great at using layers, so you might as well take advantage. For this video, I'm going to assume that you've drawn your lines inside of Photoshop. If you've scanned in some line art, you're going to do a few of these steps differently, but that'll be for another video. So assuming you've got your line art on its own layer, and here I have one color-coded blue called lines, everything you do is going to be below it. So I make a new layer below the line art, switch to the brush tool, and if I want, I can just color in red. And this way I can zoom in real close and make sure that my paint goes right up to those lines. And since I'm not actually painting on the same layer, I don't get those messy white artifacts that the paint bucket was creating. You reasonably might be asking, well, why would I want to paint if the whole goal was to quickly make the apple a red color? I want to use the paint bucket. Okay, here's how you use the paint bucket but on its own layer. We're keeping the lines and the color separated. For this, I'm going to use the magic wand tool, which as some of you veterans know is not the most precise or elegant solution, but it's quick. So I'll go to my lines layer and using the magic wand tool, I'll click anywhere in the background. So this is the negative space around the apple. I do so and you can see the marching ants are both around the apple and around the border of the document. So that means I've got the negative space selected. And since I want the positive space, I need to invert the selection. So I say select, inverse, and now I have the positive shape of the apple selected. All right, great. Now on a layer below the line art, I will use the paint bucket and fill. And then I'll deselect and see what I've come up with. So you can see it's pretty good way better than before, and also they're separate layers, so I can edit them individually, and this is important. And over here where I've messed up a little bit, maybe I'll erase away some of that manually. But you see, I can do that without worrying about destroying those lines. And making a few corrections like this is still way faster than painting it in by hand. Now there is definitely a more complete and technical explanation of why that initial paint bucket fill didn't work, why there was the yucky white stuff around the edges. But if you're just starting out, the really important takeaway here is that you cannot fill on your line art layer. Make sure to make a color layer below your lines, and to make that you're probably going to need to use some sort of selecting tool, like the magic wand, to get your initial selection. If this technique is old news to you, I apologize, but I really think it's an important thing for very beginners to see, and it would have saved me a lot of headaches. So thanks for watching, guys, and stay tuned for next video.